Hey, I'm Julie Rose. Welcome to Love What You Love. I'm an author, creator, and enthusiast, and I've always been fascinated by the things that people are super into because they're always a unique expression of curiosity and joy and wonder. So every week, I'll introduce you to another fascinating human who is into really interesting stuff. Welcome back, or welcome. This podcast exists to give you a bit of a rest, a bit of a respite, and to add a little light to the world. Thanks again to everyone who has commented or shared on social media. I want to shout out Ulrika, who, after episode 8 with watercolor artist and instructor Emma Lefebvre, was inspired to pull out her own watercolors, then posted her results on Instagram. What a thrill it was to see that. It's exactly the kind of thing I'm hoping for with this podcast. You get a little break in your day to listen to an interesting person, and maybe get inspired to love something new, too. If you'd like to support the podcast, consider subscribing and leaving a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, even if that's not where you listen. It just helps the podcast reach even more listeners. We're also on Patreon, if you're into that kind of thing, at patreon.com slash lovewhatyoulovepod. So speaking of getting inspired, this week's guest was actually meant to be featured in my very first episode back in April, but a series of events meant that I'm sharing our chat from February now. Trust me, it's worth the wait. Imitsu Jis is the host of the popular YouTube channel Simply Put Scents, and is a passionate expert on fragrances. We talk about choosing a signature scent, how long you can keep a fragrance, scent and memory, and his unusual fragrance origin story, and so much more. So let's find out why Imitsu loves fragrances, and why you might learn to love them too. All right, Imitsu, thank you so much for joining me today. You have one of the coolest YouTube channels around. Your channel is called Simply Put Scents, and Mm -hmm. it's all about um, fragrances and obviously scents and kind of doing reviews and and whatnot. So how on earth did you come to have a YouTube channel with 18,000 subscribers and 159 (laughs) videos? Like what what got you into uh, collecting scents? Wow. Well, well, I've always loved smelling great. Um, I've always wanted to smell my best. And I was one of those people who found out the, the, the actually, I found out the in a really, really sad way that <laughs> one of the fragrances that I really, really loved changed. You know, fragrances are always reformulated or discontinued in the fragrance world. And the fragrance that I happen to love the most was reformulated. So it was changed so drastically. I wanted to go on YouTube to research what new scent should I get? Because I figured, you know, like YouTube is like my college away from college. So I figured, let me learn something, you know, let me teach myself something. I'm very, you know, DIY. So let me learn how to choose something without wasting my money. Because I had also noticed that a lot of fragrances were tons weaker than they used to be. A, A lot of changes. So I went on this website. I mean, I went on YouTube and I researched some some videos on fragrance and I was shocked to find that there were many, many people talking about it. And they all steered me to, into some really great directions, which the first happened to be um, a fragrance by Terry Mugler called Amen. And that fragrance literally put me down the rabbit's hole, <laughs> so to speak. And I have not been out ever since, you know, so it's been a it's been a, an amazing journey. Um, that fragrance kind of like started everything. So, what about that particular fragrance do you like? What 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 are the what are the components? What does it smell like, and why okay. do you like it? Wow. Well, it's a weirdo. <laughs> I was like, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those guys that like, you know, I want to smell nice, but I also want to smell memorable. Mm. You know, especially when I'm out and about. You know, and at the time when I was wearing it, I was like clubbing a lot. And <laughs> I was just, you know, I wanted my fragrance to be the most bombastic scent in the room. I wanted everyone to smell me as soon as I stepped out of the cab. It was one of those situations, sure. and it was really embarrassing. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing now, but right? yeah, back then it was like I wanted my fragrance to be noticed, and that fragrance was very, very strong at the time. And it was also just really, really interesting and weird. It wasn't like your typical aqua de jo 
um, simple, nice fragrance that everyone would like. Mm-hmm. It was memorable. It was interesting. It was different. And it made people, it turned heads pretty much. Um, and what, what turned heads about it, I guess you could say, was this really weird juxtaposition between a tar note and yeah, I said tar. <laughs> wow. Like imagine like tar, like, you know, like a roof tar, uh-huh. um, black tar mixed with like patchouli and chocolate and um, uh, coffee. And it was just, uh, it's, it's a very, it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. And it was like one of the first fragrances that is considered a gourmand for men. Uh, gourmand a gourmand fragrance. Yeah. A gourmand fragrance is the French word for gourmet, which basically refers to something you would want to eat or drink. So basically, these are scents that, you know, remind you of something tasty or edible. Uh, so that's kind of like what Amen represented, like the first gourmand fragrance for men. By the way, that category has become extremely well known by now and very popular. Um, there's a lot of fragrances that kind of remind you of like edibles. So well, yeah, why do you think that is? Why? Pretty cool. Yeah, because I mean, oh, there's like there's aquatics and there. I mean, there's the whole different categories. Why has gourmand mm-hmm. become so popular? Well, I feel like gourmands are warm and inviting, mm. and um, some people hate them. Um, but I find that people who tend to appreciate perfume appreciate a good gourmand because they typically are a little bit more interesting, unique, and um, complex. They tend to take you on a journey when you wear them. So, I mean, before that particular Mugler uh, scent, had you mm-hmm. been, I mean, were you like an Axe body spray guy? <laughs> or were you oh. like, were you actually like, were you into colognes and, and um, was, you know, all that really before was. that? Yeah. Actually, yeah, it was fragrance. Um, I was still into scents, but they were like, you know, your typical like um, CK1s. Mm. Um, Issey Miyake was like a really cool aquatic but interesting fragrance. But I had a really, 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 really messed up story about that fragrance, um, <laughs> which kind of made me kind of like look for more fragrances. I think this was the scent that kind of had me looking for something else. And uh, so uh, <laughs> I was wearing Issey Miyake, um one day, and um, this was a fragrance that I used to wear a lot. And one day I ran out and I went and bought a new bottle, but the new bottle that I bought was reformulated and the fragrance had dramatically changed. One of the things that changed was that it was very, very weak, much weaker than it used to be. So one day I was about to go out and I was about to go out to this party um, and I sprayed a bunch of it on like because I wanted it to stick. Right. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to overdose and just spray it all crazy. (laughs) So I went crazy with this trigger. Okay, so it was insane. I left the I left my house a walking cloud. And when I got to the party one day, I was standing next. I was at the bar and I had met a really, really nice young lady. And I was like, hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. So we started chatting and she just like started looking at me and her her brow started to like kind of furrow or like she started looking at me like and then she just stopped she was like um excuse me honey not um but um not to <laughs> she goes excuse me honey <laughs> i don't mean anything but you smell like cat pee oh no and yeah i said what in my mind i'm like I just crumbled into this little ball of a person and I just wanted to be tossed out. <laughs> the garbage. It was so funny. So she walked away and I said to myself, okay, I cannot stay here because I did not want to be that guy right. who she points to with her friends. <laughs> like he smelled like cat pee, right. like girls, like, well, stay away from him. So I just left the party, oh. took my cloudy self home <laughs> and hope that no one else had that to say to me uh but yeah i tossed that bottle out as soon as i got back to the house haven't worn it since to be honest but yeah yeah that that uh that was kind of like the that's what took me down the journey because that was a fragrance that was reformulated and i wanted to be informed on what fragrances were and weren't going forward so i wouldn't be that guy overdoing it in the party so (laughs) got it got it got it that's what sent me down this rabbit (laughs) hole it was crazy so how many yeah that's um Oh my goodness. So how many <laughs> bottles of now uh, maybe you can help uh educate the audience. So there's like mm-hmm. eau de toilette and there's what are yep. the different categories? So you have eau de cologne, eau de toilette and eau de parfum. And then you have what's considered extra uh which is um basically different categories of oils within the fragrance. Uh so percentages of oil. 
So anything above like about 15%, you could say is a par, is a extract, um, which basically is a very strong or a pure parfum or a very strong fragrance. Uh, but typically nowadays, it's really hard to, uh, those, those terms really don't matter anymore because I noticed that parfums now are as light as some eau de toilettes and there are some eau de toilettes that are as powerful as eau de parfum. Uh, but pretty much now, I think parfum represents fragrances that are deeper. Uh, eau de toilette represent fragrances that are a little bit more breathy, more airy. And eau de cologne basically represents fragrances that are very light, kind of like skin scents. Are the categories priced accordingly? You would think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> you would think so. Um, the, the, the fragrance world has created that illusion. So, yes, you could say so. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And so... How many bottles of any one of those things do you have in your house at any one time? I own over 340 <laughs> fragrances at this point. Um, and I know that sounds like stressful hoarding, but <laughs> trust me, guys, like <laughs> I'm not being buried alive in boxes and fragrance bottles. It's not that serious. But at the end of the day, let's put it like this. I review fragrances, right? Would you trust a person who went out to review restaurants if they didn't go out to eat. Exactly. Would you trust their opinion? Exactly. I wouldn't. So yeah, when it comes to fragrance, I eat a lot. So Right. Right. And do you to please tell me you use a spreadsheet to keep track of everything? No, no, oh. no, no, no. Um no I don't. Basically, I I try to separate my fragrances into seasons. Hmm. Uh this way I rotate them accordingly. Um so fragrances that I find to be more winter appropriate, I typically keep those as my options and put everything else away. So out of sight, out of mind. And then when the appropriate time comes and the spring comes around, I'll unleash those options for the spring. <laughs> so it. it's kind of, and then I take the, and then I put away this, uh, the winter thing. So, um, and this, this theory of fragrances being expor, um, you know, the expiration date, like, don't listen to that. Um, if you keep your fragrances in a cool, dark place, a drawer, a closet that isn't warm, um, you'll, your fragrances will stay well for, for decades. For decades, really? Yes, absolutely. I have a scent that's at least 40 years old. And the only thing, it's called Eau Sauvage by Dior. And the only thing that's changed is a lot of the top note citruses have evaporated. But other than that, the fragrance is pretty much intact. It's beautiful, but um, it just doesn't have that sparkling citrus it used to have. So what that's is understandable. Sure. <laughs> what is the anatomy of a scent? So you say top note, you know, what what is a scent kind of comprised of when, you know, sometimes people just go to the store and they say, oh, that smells nice. And they spray it on and they leave. But like, what right. are the components? It's very complex. Well, that's also a good way to get tricked out there, because like sometimes you smell a fragrance in the beginning and it smells amazing. But that's kind of how the fragrance company tricks you, because that's the most amazing part of the fragrance. So you're literally smelling a great way for like an hour. And then afterward, you smell like not so great. I would say um, a good consideration to to try fragrances out over a long haul before you consider purchasing, because that way you avoid making mistakes. And pretty much the anatomy of a fragrance is your top notes, your uh, mid notes, and then your base notes. Uh, and basically that represents easygoing citruses, for instance, usually are at the top of the fragrance. So those are sparkling, they pop, they are very, very beautiful, and they kind of like uh, tickle the nose and bring you forward, get you into the scent. Uh, and then that's followed up usually by what they call heart notes, or uh, excuse me, mid notes. And those are usually like fragrance notes that are florals, um, or sometimes spices or woods. Then you have your base notes, which could be more heavier woods, denser vanillas, patchoulis, um, things that are thicker, denser, that usually support the fragrance structure. Uh, that's usually how fragrance pyramid is constructed. Uh, and usually you're supposed to smell things in that order, top, mid, and then base. And usually the base notes, you're going to smell that like four or five hours into the scent. That's usually how it's supposed to go. Got it. Got it. So the top note kind of is like that initial hit. And then as mm -hmm. as the time wears on, then it, it kind of mellows out into the ultimately into Mids, the base notes. Yes. You can look at it like a play. So like you have your opening act, you know, your mid act, and then your finale. 
that's basically like a fragrance. Got it. People's body chemistry and their skin chemistry, you know, is very variable. Um, so like my skin eats fragrance. I put it on and it <laughs> disappears. Absolutely. Uh, fragrance works on different people in a different way. And uh, what I find is, is that fragrance typically enjoys um, non-dry skin. Mm -hmm. So if your skin typically is dry, your fragrance is going to struggle existing on your skin the way it would on a person, let's say, who has more moist, moisturized skin. So I would say that uh, for a person who has, let's say, difficulty keeping their fragrance on and having it stick to skin, there's a couple of things you can do. You can use moisturizer, unscented moisturizer, and then apply your fragrance on top of it. So this way, the fragrance evaporates a lot slower. Um, you can usually eke out an hour to an hour extra longevity just doing that alone. Um, another suggestion I would say is possibly like spraying your collar, spraying cloth, your scarf, uh, the collar of your jacket, the collar of your blouse, um, things of that nature, uh, the cuff of your the cuff of your shirt. Uh, that may also keep your fragrance on longer because fragrance tends to stick to cloth longer than skin. So if you do that, that'll also eke along um, a few more hours. And then of course the back of your hair. You can ah, never go wrong there. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. And mm -hmm. so, and, and scents besides kind of how much they stay on your skin, depending on a lot of factors, do, do the scents have different, do they smell different on different people? Yes. Well, yes and no. So there's a lot of fragrance companies that typically have uh, what I would say synthetic ingredients mostly in their fragrances. And that's not typically a bad thing or a good thing. Um, I don't look at synthetic ingredients or natural ingredients as the best or the worst. Typically though, natural ingredients are more expensive. But if a fragrance has more synthetic ingredients, it will tend to smell the same on everyone. If oh. a fragrance has more natural ingredients, it will tend to exist more like a chameleon on different people. If I, if we were, if both of us, for instance, may wear a, wear a natural fragrance, that natural, the, the, the fragrance with more natural ingredients tends to exist differently on different people. That is fascinating. So your advice would be to people, if you're in, if you're in Sephora or if you're wherever, you're in Macy's and you smell a scent that you think you like, actually spray it on and live with it for a few hours and see if you still like it at the end. Oh, absolutely. That's extremely important because usually the beginning of the scent is the most beautiful. And um, if you just go by that and you don't check out what's going on in the second and finale, the second act in the finale, you typically will be uh, disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. basically like, um, you know, um, typically when you go to a movie, you know what the movie's about, but you can get disappointed if the ending is bad. Um so it's basically like um, it's basically that situation. Um, you're taking a risk. But if you, you know, check out the previews, you might find that you make a much more wise decision. Got it. Great analogy. Great analogy. Mm -hmm. So um, this is kind of a, a off the wall question. But when mm -hmm. you were a little kid, what was mm -hmm. your favorite smell? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. When I was a kid, I liked the smell of gasoline. <laughs> Me too. I like the smell of gasoline. I like the scent of um, a match after it's been um, blown out. I don't know what that was, but that was also pretty cool to me. Uh, <laughs> I love it. And, and yeah, those were like weirdo smells that I was always like, wow. But not gasoline and it's gasoline, the exhaust as you're leaving the gas station. That's <laughs> always the best. <laughs> so do you find yourself... Um, being drawn towards scents that have kind of that gasoline or like a brimstone kind of smell? Interestingly enough, I do. I have an appreciation for fragrances that are odd, yeah. that have like tar, for instance. Like a lot of people, when they hear about that, they're like, I don't know if I want to put that on my skin. <laughs> I don't want to smell like tar. Like that's not a, that's not a thing to do. Right. Uh, but for me, it, for me, it is, you know, I'm like, yeah, like, because I don't mind. Like I'm a little, I'm a lot more open-minded when it comes to that. And there's a fragrance called Fahrenheit that, that is like a real classic scent. Um, the original fragrance of Fahrenheit had tons of that gasoline odor, and that 
was like something I loved. And again, it's been reformulated and that's not there anymore. But yeah, I'm a fan of interesting scents because I think I was a weirdo when I was a kid. I love so. it. <laughs> I love it. Now, were the people in your life, uh, did they lo- enjoy scents? Did they wear perfume cologne or was this no. just something you developed kind of on your own? Yeah, I think I don't really find. Um, well, actually, I can't say that. Like I had a, my uncle was uh, someone that I can say had tons of bottles. And it's interesting because uh, I find myself when I want to feel nostalgic, hmm. I am. Um, finding myself purchasing bottles of fragrances that he used to wear in the 80s and like in the 90s so uh yeah I um I would say he would probably be someone that I would see wearing different fragrances and having tons of them and wearing them for different reasons at different points and moments Mm. and scenarios so uh yeah he would probably be an inspiration I didn't even really think about but he probably subconsciously inspired a lot of my fragrance you know obsession yeah 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 and you know scent is so evocative of Mm -hmm. you know of so many memories like i for sure i cannot smell white linen anymore Mm -hmm. because it reminds me so powerfully of my mom Uh, and she yeah she passed away in 2006 and that was her that was her scent and like Mm -hmm. even if i just get a whiff of it i just get Oh, the nostalgia is so thick, and and I just so so true. I can't I can't deal. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm moving on. I can't I can't deal with this scent. Um, so <laughs> oh. has this branched off into any other interests that you maybe didn't anticipate, like YouTube maybe? Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I I have so much more of an understanding about what people like and what um what the public wants at some point i would love to be a creative director mm. of a brand mm. that creates perfume uh that's a goal i think doing it a proper way it's not there anymore it used to be but i feel like they've gotten lazy the companies that are creating fragrances are focused more on focus groups of people who don't really know fragrance so it's like it's like if you're going to create a wine you're going to create a wine with the type of like gravitas that would that people who drink wine would appreciate. You would want a person who loves wine to love your wine. Whereas the fragrance community, the fragrance companies, I should say, they're creating fragrances for people who don't love fragrance. Hmm. So what you have is fragrances that are extremely commercial with no identity, no personality, not saying anything whatsoever that have people smelling like what you could buy for $19 at Zara. And there's nothing wrong with those fragrances, by the way, at Zara, if you're into them. But if I'm Chanel or if I'm Dior or if I'm a brand of a certain echelon, I wouldn't want to be on that level. And yet a lot of times they are. So it's kind of disappointing. Yeah. I would like to change that. Yeah, <laughs> if I yeah totally. Now, do you do you also kind of uh, smell and review women's scents as well? Or do you stick mostly to quote unquote, oh. quote unquote, men's scents? I do reviews on fragrances that are also unisex, and I have done a video or two um, focused on female uh, viewers, but I have to be honest, I think men need a lot more help than women in the fragrance world, (laughs) and it has a lot to do with the fact that uh, a lot of the times, like, we are, um, uh, we purchase, we're not purchasing fragrances for ourselves much of the time. It's the women in our lives, the loved ones in our lives that are getting fragrances for us. So we tend to not really know our own taste. So we get things that are popular and we think, okay, let's just get that new Versace because Versace is a name we know and sounds really cool. But what happens is um, you don't really know what you should wear. You just wear what's popular. That's what a lot of guys just resort to. Um, So I'm basically, my channel helps a lot of men figure out what their tastes are. Um, so that they can make a wise choice when they purchase fragrances for themselves. I do want to talk more about female fragrances because I think I own tons of them for myself. I don't wear it all the time, but I just love to smell them. So I buy a female fragrance just to smell it or to share it with my girlfriend. Uh, But yeah, like I love fragrance in general. So I don't believe fragrances should be about sex. It should be about what you enjoy. If you like a scent that's feminine and you're a guy, do it. You might be shocked at the reaction. In terms of, you know, scents are not, like, good scents are not cheap. 
<laughs> they're not, although, you know, mm-hmm. there probably are some decent scents that are, you know, at, in the yeah, lower price ones, range. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. if, if you could recommend, um, I mean, not to put you on the spot, but like if, mm-hmm. Could you recommend a couple of different scents in different price categories um, that you think are just maybe maybe like good introductory scents for people who don't really know, like to your point, that don't really maybe know their, their taste or don't know what they're doing? Well, I would definitely consider um, checking out Simply Put Scents um, video, YouTube videos. Yep. Like that will definitely be a great first step. But of course, like um, I would say if, you're looking for upper tier fragrances, uh, fragrances that are a little bit more high in quality. You want to go for companies that are considered niche brands. And what do I mean by that? These are companies that don't make anything but fragrance. Mm. Uh, fragrance companies like Hermes, fragrance companies like Dior, Chanel, they create fragrances, colognes, makeup. They do a bunch of a range of various products that aren't fragrance focused. So they are considered designers. And uh, so if you're looking for something of a certain echelon, you want to focus towards independent brands or niche companies. They tend to have way better aesthetics, way better, way better packaging. Their fragrances tend to be using way better ingredients, and uh, they tend to also have a lot better longevity. So for those um, niche, for those mm-hmm. niche and kind of higher end, I mean, what are we talking in terms of price and how much do you get? You could talk anywhere from like uh, for, let's say, 100 milliliters. It could be anywhere from um, 195 up to $1,000. Wow. Uh, there are companies that are doing fragrances that are even more than that. He has perfumes that are um, $2,500. $2, so that's pretty high. Um, but you don't have to go that high to smell great. I'm just saying, like, there's right. a lot of great fragrances that you can purchase that are uh, even under $200, even under $150. And uh, you can look at brands that are, if you want to smell interesting, unique, and not break the bank, I would say that there's a company you can look at called Zoologist. And this company is crazy because they basically are a zoo. He creates fragrances based on the environment or what the animal is into or things that the animal does that's very, very, very particular to that animal. And it's amazing the things that he does. Like he has a fragrance called Panda, uh, Nightingale, Moth, Camel, like, and they all represent that animal in their environment and their habitat it's amazing and also very well priced so so what kind of is the scent profile of camel a camel basically smells bad (laughs) (laughs) that's why i ask (laughs) and but but you know what's crazy this is the interesting thing about zoologists zoologists makes things that smell animalistic or animalic i should say Mm -hmm. uh but they smell great it's like this really interesting thing with perfume that makes you reevaluate fragrance. Once you start getting to a certain level of fragrance, I would say, um, once you start getting to a certain level in your fragrance journey, you start to appreciate things that are unconventional a lot more. So um, there are fragrances that I noticed that are extremely complex and not easy to like, but there are things that smell bad that if done in a certain way, a certain like perfumer who's a great artist in his own right can turn things that smell rancid into things that smell amazing mm. and interesting and beautiful and, and sexy and, um, and like, just like fragrances that you, you just cannot help but want to keep smelling over and over. I would say check that out though, because they're, they're really great. Um, they're experimental, they're conceptual, they're artistic. And yeah, they're awesome. And they're amazingly well priced again for the quality you're getting. And that's, that's what's really coming through is that scent. It's not just, Hey, you're going to slap on some, some cologne and go out. It's like, it's, it's artistry and it's a story. You're telling, you're telling a story about yourself by what you're putting on as well. Absolutely. People don't recognize this, but you can tell a lot about a person based on the scent that they choose. Uh, you will be shocked. And not a lot of people are making those type of judgments, but you'd be surprised subconsciously the mind makes those judgments anyway. So let's put it like this. If 
you were, let's say, um, let's say you're a young woman, you're going out and you smell a guy who's wearing like some really cheap Paco Rabanne sweet <laughs> fragrance. You're probably going to be like douchebag and move on, <laughs> you know? And I would say, look at your fragrance like you look at your clothing. The way you choose your fragrance should be the same way you choose your clothing. Like the way it should be the same way. You wouldn't wear your heaviest coat in the summer and you wouldn't wear shorts in the winter. You know, there's a time and a place for those things, right? So that's the exact same way you should see your fragrances. Wear things that are that are heavier when it's colder, wear things that are lighter when it's warmer, and you'll smell a lot better to people around you. That's the general rule. And what, what would you um, say yeah. is the profile of a winter versus like a summer scent? So a winter scent tends to be scents that are heavier, darker, sweeter, fragrances that tend to be like longer lasting. Um, fragrances that tend to have a lot more of a darker profile, like scents with leather, scents with uh, patchouli, oud, which is a really dark, um, woody scent. Uh, vanillas are also very, very cold weather appropriate. Spices like cinnamon, cardamom. And then in the summer you, or in the warmer seasons, you want to wear fragrances that are greener or refreshing or uh, citrusy fragrances that have tons of pineapple or bergamot those are fragrances that tend to do well when it's hot uh, because you want to wear something that when it's warm just makes you feel more refreshed it it's fascinating how that works on the mind you feel more cool when your fragrances um are more refreshing when it's hot outside and you smell and you smell a ton better to other people <laughs> like if you're that guy or girl smelling like tons of vanilla on like a 90 degree day trust me people are really hating you they're looking at you and they're like perfume lady cologne guy and not in a good way so right, don't be right, that right don't be that guy don't be that yeah. so so you know getting really high quality scents um mm -hmm. is important um and it sounds also expensive but i guess it sounds like you know to your point you could put them in a closet and you could you could literally have these scents for a very long time. So it's an investment. For sure. Absolutely. Just like you invest in your clothing and your wardrobe, you should invest in your fragrance. Um, they go hand in hand. Just like your shoes and your outfit match a certain way. I think your scent should be an, a, an accessory that matches your style and your outfit and your your feelings, your emotion, your your way. So yeah, it's it's an investment and a and a an investment worth investing in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> because your scent of smell will be something that people will remember forever. Like you'll smell something that will take you back to your childhood, mm -hmm. just like you were mentioning earlier mm -hmm. with your mom. Um, so and I have the same thing with vanilla. Like when I smell vanilla, it always takes me back to um, baking cakes with my grandmother mm. and licking the bowl afterwards. <laughs> so. You know, and that is like this really strong memory. So every time I smell vanilla, it just warms my heart. So that's the same thing. And I love vanilla on other people, you know, especially when I smell vanilla on a woman. I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. you know, so vanilla is a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I know you like that kind of that smell of, of gasoline and tar. Mm -hmm. um, what are mm -hmm. like your top five uh, scent profiles or scent components that you just you could not live without wow that's difficult because um i like a lot of different notes and fragrance i mean i find that i love fig and perfume i find that i love sandalwood um frankincense or incense in general um vanilla is a note that i love and i would have to say probably cardamom huh. would be in there um, I find that cardamom is a very sexy note. It's very spicy, but it, it's uh, um, very attractive to smell in the air. Do many designers or niche, you know, niche creators, do they use cardamom? Is that like a scent oh, that yeah. people don't really realize is in there? There's tons of cardamom and tons of fragrances, oh. even designer fragrances. And again, guys, don't get me wrong. There are good fragrances made by designer companies, but... You just have to really do your homework before you make that choice, because a lot of times they have you smelling like everyone and not in a good way. Um, so it's not a it's not bad to buy a fragrance. Oh, by the way, Hermes, for instance, Hermes makes amazing fragrances. 
I still find their meds to be, uh, for a designer brand, I feel like they are extremely on point with what they do and the quality and the craftsmanship that they put into their fragrances is on a certain level that's above most brands. So if someone was kind of new to their journey, um, besides mm-hmm. going to watch your videos, <laughs> um, nah. which I highly recommend, <laughs> um, are, what, <laughs> what, what else, you know, what's, what's their first step? I, <laughs> I think a couple of things you could do. Um, first of all, go out into a store and before you purchase anything, just smell things. Just take the time. Don't ask what other people think. Don't care about other people and what they think, because I think that also gets uh, very dicey. We always want to get the opinions of other people instead of trusting our own taste. Mm. And it's great to, you know, get other people's opinion every now and then. But for a beginner, I want people who are new to perfume to find out what they love based on their taste and what they like based on their exposure to smells all their entire lifetimes. So go to a fragrance company or go to a a department store that has tons of options and just explore and just smell. Uh, Don't put things on your skin just yet. Just smell them. And once you find that you have like, you know, write down or, um, yeah, take notes of the sense that you find that you love, that you found like, wow, why do I love this? And you don't even understand why. Make a mental note, write that fragrance down and try to get a sample of that fragrance later when you're at home, put it on your skin and see what it's doing on your skin. See how long it lasts. You know, put your, you know, tell Siri to put a timer on for like every two to three hours and just see how long it lasts and how it's progressing on your skin during that time. Um, and just experience it and live with it. You know, um, let it do what it do on your skin and hopefully it works. And if it does, yes, you found a fragrance worth your time. If it doesn't, move on to the next one that you like. And I feel like that is a great way to discover your taste, to discover what you love. And um, yeah, and be confident in your taste because if it doesn't smell great to someone, it's going to smell lovely to someone else. Mm -hmm. So have that confidence in yourself and your taste to just wear what you love. Do you find that since you have gotten so into scents and knowing the components and all that stuff, that you apply that to other things like coffee? Do you, can you tell the different components in a coffee or in a wine or other things? Has it kind of heightened your ability to, to make those discernments? Well, the funniest thing, I find that if my coffee is not done a certain way, I can always tell. <laughs> uh, my sense of taste, I feel like, is a much stronger that my sense of smell is a certain way. Um, I'm at, at at this point, I can smell dozens of fragrances and I don't feel like I get tired. My nose doesn't like want to fall off. Mm. I feel like there are other people out there. <laughs> they smell more than five fragrances. They're done. Everything starts to smell the same. Me, it's a little different. Like I train my nose to smell things with a certain discernment and I can pick out notes and ingredients now that I couldn't at some point in the past. Um, so, and it gets in, it increases every time, uh, I feel like over time it's getting better and better and better. I I would say, yes, there are definitely progressions that you go through and your taste evolve and you grow. It's like people who like cheese when you start off with a simple, simple cheese, Mm -hmm. and then you find yourself really attracted to the stinky stuff and you're (laughs) like, whoa, why is that? But you love it, though, you know, but you couldn't if you started off with that stinky cheese, you probably would have never ate cheese after that. Um, Sometimes you just got to start off with the designers and acclimate yourself in the fragrance world. And then you find yourself graduating to different things. Is there anything else about scents or collecting scents um, that you think uh, listeners should know about? Don't buy cheap stuff (laughs) if you can help it. Um, I do find that there is a lot of cheap fragrances that you can find on certain websites at a discount to what you can retail. That's a little different, but try to avoid fragrances that, you know, that are using ingredients that aren't top of the no- top notch. Uh, for one, it might give you headaches, migraines, it might affect your skin. Uh, it might make other people around you uncomfortable. So I tend to say, uh, instead of investing, if you're going into this as a hobby, especially, try to avoid what they call cheapies. Start off with quality and stick with the things you love, and I think you'll be okay. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Um, oh, it was my pleasure. This, this was fun. Awesome. This is great. Listening to him totally makes you want to collect fragrances, doesn't it? And here's a cool secret. Imitsu is in the midst of writing a book on fragrances, so I'll be sure to let you know when that becomes available. You can find Imitsu on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram as Simply Put Sense. I'll make sure to include links in the show notes. Also, I'm now including links to my guests' favorite nonprofits in the show notes, and I'm also including a rotating list of my own favorite nonprofits, so definitely check those out. Just a reminder, you can find the podcast on Instagram at LoveWhatYouLovePod, on Twitter at WhatYouLovePod, and the website is lovewhatyoulovepod.com. Zeke Rodriguez-Thomas at MindJam Media provided amazing editing assistance. You can find Zeke at mindjammedia.com. Also, huge thanks to Emily White for the episode transcripts, which are available to patrons at patreon.com slash lovewhatyoulovepod. So, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and love the hell out of whatever it is that you love. You need it, and we definitely need it. Thanks for listening. Let's hang out again soon. Good in this world, Mr. Furl. And it's worth fighting for.